Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the Rising Leaders of Color Info Session webinar. Uh, I'm Amelia Cacciapero, pronoun she, her, xia, uh, TCG's Director of Grant Making Programs. Uh, I'm calling in from the ancestral home and actually the stolen land of the Lani Lenape people, uh, also known as Manhattan. Uh, I'm a brown skinned Filipina with short black hair, wearing tortoiseshell glasses, and I'm sitting in front of a blue wall. Um, passing it over to my colleague, Big. Thank you, Amelia. Hi, everybody. My name is Big Raksak Gong Seng. My pronouns are she or they. I am TCG's Assistant Director of Grant Making Programs. I'm calling from the land of the indigenous people of Taiwan. I am a brown skinned Thai immigrant with long black hair swept to one side, wearing a pair of black cat eye glasses and a, blank, uh, and a black tank top. I'm also gonna pass to my colleague, Danica here. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Danica Tablante, pronouns she, her, hers. I am TCG's Institutional Philanthropy Manager. I am a brown-skinned Filipina um, with short black hair, wearing a blue shirt and sitting in front of a, uh, a closet, a, a white and yellow closet. And I'm also zooming in from the land of the Lenape, but specifically, uh, the North Jersey area. Um, back to you, Big. Thank you, Danica. Um, before we get started, I would like to bring up our land acknowledgement. So Danica is here to help with the slide as well. So thank you, Danica, for that. Uh, so we will take a moment to offer our respects to the many lands on which we gather and to honor the traditional stewards of these lands. If you have a land acknowledgement as part of your personal or organizational practice, we invite you to share them in the comments on Zoom as well. While land acknowledgement is a positive first step, it is also important to go beyond that. Perhaps by asking yourself, how are you using your privilege to support indigenous people and communities? And how are you giving back to the land that you are on? So this is TCG land acknowledgement on the screen. So today's call will last about an hour and will be recorded for later viewing on TCG's website and YouTube as well. We will pause from time to time to respond to questions submitted to us on Zoom chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat function to communicate and we'll get to that uh, momentarily. For now, I'm gonna pass the floor back on to Amelia. Okay, thanks Big. Um, so Big and I are working together to administer the Rising Leaders of Color program, which is supported by the Howard Gilman Foundation and Walt Disney Imagineering. Want to give a big shout out to our um, uh, supporters of the program. Uh, so we're going to try to get through as many questions today, uh, but please know that really at any time you could email us at uh, rkongseng at tcg.org. Uh, that's Big's email, and I think we'll have it on the screen in a little bit. 
Um, and we will get back to you within two to three business days because we know that this is time sensitive, uh, particularly with a deadline. Um, so today's call is designed to provide you with an overview of the Rising Leaders of Color program and really to help you prepare your application. Uh, we understand that many of you may be applying for a TCG program for the very first time, and we'll do our best to demystify the process and clarify it. Um, we're working to make applying for this program as streamlined as possible and with a quick turnaround. Uh, now, you've probably heard us uh, and seen on the call, too, that we're using the term BIPOC for solidarity purposes, and it represents a multiplicity of racial, ethnic, and cultural groups. Uh, we acknowledge that the term BIPOC is imperfect, right? It's not universally embraced by many who identify as people of color and or people of the global majority. Um, and that language is in a constant state of reimagination and redefinition. Uh, so for reference, uh, Black, Indigenous, and people of color represent over 80% of the global population. Now, it's possible that during the program period, the language may shift again, depending on what the landscape is doing. Um, so uh, you may not know actually about TCG's work and we wanted to start this session by talking a bit about TCG's mission and values. Um, and certainly as it relates to this specific program. Uh, so to give you uh, some background about TCG and you see our mission and values there on the screen, um, in 2021, we celebrated our 60th anniversary as an organization, and we went through a year-long strategic planning process. Uh, as a result, we crafted this reframe vision that you see on the screen. Um, and really, uh, we also, alongside with the recrafted mission, um, really committed to centering BIPOC folks in our program services and partnerships. Uh, although TCG already had a very long history of nurturing, supporting and uplifting BIPOC theater artists and leaders and theaters of color. So as a service organization for the theater, uh, for the US theater actually, uh, TCG has got a core membership of over 500 theaters and affiliate organizations nationwide. Um, we have membership categories for universities, funders, um, international colleagues and organizations and other not-for-profit organizations. And we have over 12,000 individual members. So you can read a bit more about member benefits and services on our website under the membership tab. So if you just go to that uh, tcg.org, that's our site. Um, so the core elements of TCG's programs and services uh, fall into several buckets. Uh, one is networking and knowledge building. We hold conferences and events, both in person and online. Um, we hold a national conference for theater professionals, artistic and administrative leaders, artists, trustees, educators. Uh, and our last one was June 2022 in Pittsburgh. It moves around the country uh, every year or so. Uh, last November, we convened theater trustees for a two and a half day retreat on governance. Um, and we have online webinars and working sessions. Last December, we held a virtual lab on audiences. And as a follow-up, we're offering um, working groups uh, who are gonna be meeting virtually. And more info on that is on our website. If you wanna look for it, it's called Rebuilding Our Houses Virtual Working Groups. Uh, and then uh, in the very near future, we're going to be convening theaters of color. Now, another bucket for TCG uh, are our surveys and research. Uh, we've done uh, surveys uh, about the impact of COVID on our field, both individual artists and organizations. Uh, we regularly do a salary survey to, what's, to see what people um, are and actually aren't making in the theater field. Um, we also do a fiscal survey to take a look at the fiscal health of organizations. 
uh, another bucket of our work uh, is grant making. And we're gonna be going uh, obviously in depth into our Rising Leaders of Color program. Uh, in addition to this program, uh, we have um, a Thrive program specifically to uplift theaters of color. Uh, we have our Willa Kim scholarships for costume designers. Uh, we've offered the Freelancers Relief Fund for designers. Uh, we have the Fox Foundation Resident, Resident Actor Fellowships, which is in two categories, um, depending on uh, where you are in the continuum of your career as an actor. Uh, we also have other professional development opportunities. So in addition to rising leaders of color, we have other programs for leaders in other areas of the field. Um, another major area of our work is publishing. Um, American Theatre Magazine, which you may or may not be aware of, if you aren't aware of it, hopefully you'll uh, check it out, go to the website, uh, is part of TCG, and we do have special issues and features, including um, a recent series actually focusing on disability in the theatre field. Um, in September 2020, uh, we had an issue that was shining a light, long overdue spotlight actually on the work and the lives of trans and gender non-conforming artists and workers in the US theater. Uh, with both the series on disability and on TGNC uh, communities, those were collaboratively created with colleagues from those communities. Um, still on publishing uh, publications, TCG is actually the largest not-for-profit publisher in the U.S. And our authors have been honored with numerous Pulitzer Prizes and Tony Awards, Nobel Prize for Literature, uh, plus countless Obies, Drama Desk Awards, and other national and international prizes. Um, the writers that are part of our TCG circle include Michael R. Jackson, uh, Brandon uh, Jacobs Jen Jen Jennings, uh, Martina Mayock, uh, Heidi Schreck, uh, Jeremy O. Harris, um, Tony Kushner, Paula Vogel, and many, many more. Um, and lastly, but certainly not least, another area of our work is national and global leadership and advocacy. Um, during the pandemic, we held a series of webinars around government re relief funds and how to access them, how to demystify that process. Uh, we also do advocacy on visa related issues and other areas of um, concern in the theater field. Um, and one thing to note is that TCG is the US Center for the International Theater Institute, which is a worldwide network spanning about 90 different countries. Um, as a heads up of things uh, to watch on the calendar, uh, World Theater Day is March 27th, and we'll be having a variety of activities and information on that on our website. So uh, just a little taste of some of the things that we've got on deck in our work. Um, so with the rising leaders of color specifically, and I think uh, Danica's probably gonna shift it. There we go. Um, you know, we're really in an unprecedented time here in the US and globally. Uh, since March, 2020, as you know, we've been living with COVID. Um, theaters have uh, opened and closed. Uh, and at the same time, vaccinations are reaching more and more people in the US and across the globe. Um, because of all that's happened, the 2020 and 2021 rounds of this program uh, were online. Um, we resumed in-person activities uh, with some online programming still for the 2022 round, which was focused on leaders uh, based in Pittsburgh. Uh, barring any un unforeseen situations, knock wood, uh, <laughs> Uh, the 2023 round will also combine in-person and online activities. So in 2023, the Rising Leaders of Color is focusing on early career journalists and critics of color 
who are committed to uplifting the stories of BIPOC and Black theaters, Indigenous theaters, and all other theaters of color, um, upholding equitable practices in the US theater field, and also critics and journalists who demonstrate the potential to impact the theater field in a positive way. Um, I wanted to just uh, point out that, you know, we believe that leadership is not based on position. Uh, leaders are in all areas of the field, certainly including journalists and critics, as well as those working in the artistic, administrative, educational production areas of theater. Um, you know, oftentimes journalists and critics don't see themselves as leaders. However, BIPOC journalists and critics really are the key, I think, to unlocking meaning in work created by BIPOC theater makers that may not be seen otherwise. Um, a really robust dialogue between BIPOC critics and BIPOC theater makers can generate a more vibrant theater ecology, right? Where BIPOC audiences can see their truths, their complexities uh, and questions voice. Uh, equally valuable is the role that BIPOC journalists and critics play to uncover aesthetic, cultural and political meaning in work created by non-BIPOC cultures. So since, uh, and you see this on the screen here, uh, since 2016, TCG's Rising Leaders of Color program has nurtured, supported, and uplifted uh, 58 Black, Indigenous, Asian American, Pacific Islander, Latine, um, Middle Eastern, North African, and mixed race early career leaders from across the country. So we're gonna go to the next slide here. Okay, um, so about the program. Um, the RLC curriculum, we think of it as a three-legged stool. So it's a combination of self-reflection and group work, individual coaching, and workshops. So RLC supports participants through connecting you to people who can help you learn more about the field and leadership, um, both peers and other intergenerational leaders. Um, also a way of supporting you is developing your writing and leadership skills and identifying ways to navigate through your career as a BIPOC leader, because there are things specific to our experience uh, that are different from white colleagues. Um, we really feel that all of TCG's grant programs are living and <laughs> breathing programs, right? We're constantly evaluating their impact on the field, and we make course adjustments whenever necessary, uh, particularly as our field continues to weather the pandemic. And these course adjustments uh, really will come from participants in the program, from uh, mentors and advisors and other folks throughout the field. Um, let me pass it over to Big to take you through some of the eligibility. Thank you, Amelia. Um, and thank you, Danica, for the slide. So RLC, the Rising Leaders of Color program, is created for those in early stages of their career for whom participation would accelerate their professional development and knowledge of the theater field. Journalists and critics who have already had significant national recognition and participated in similar programs will probably be beyond the scope of this program. At the same time, those who are not yet at a point in their career to fully take advantage of this level of professional development will generally not be competitive. In addition to those currently working as writers, RLC also encourages applicants who may not formally identify themselves as a journalist and or a critic. It is not necessary for applicants to have had paid experience as a journalist and or a critic, or to have written work that has been included in a traditional publication. We believe that writers in, uh, are in all, we believe that writers in all formats can be cultural mirrors either in short form like social media or social networking, spoken word and poetry, as well as long form such as blogs, podcasts, articles, op-ed, essays, et cetera, they're all welcome. So the eligibility. 
ROC applicants must be based in the U.S. and or U.S. territories. Um, and that includes American Samoa, Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. They also must self-identify as Black, Indigenous, and people of color or BIPOC. Uh, and they must be at least 21 years, old, uh, 21 years of age by the program orientation on Wednesday, May 10th this year. And lastly, they must be able to receive taxable income in the U.S. Generally, though, applicants who are a full-time student at a university or conservatory training program uh, during the program period will generally not be competitive. It is worth noting, though, that we define theater in the broadest terms possible, including dramatic theater, music theater, physical theater, and object theater. So that's the criteria. I'm going to pass back on to Amelia to talk about uh, the selection. Great. Thanks, Big, and thanks, Danica. Um, so TCG uses a peer panel process, uh, which means that uh, for this program, it'll be a group of um, journalist critics and other theater leaders who are working professionals and knowledgeable about the field of theater. Uh, so they're independent and they are not part of the TCG staff. Um, and applications, as you can see here on the screen, are going to be reviewed, and that includes the writing sample. And as Big had mentioned, it doesn't have to be a, a writing sample that has been published in a traditional form. Uh, so all of the application materials will be reviewed based on the criteria listed on the, on the slide. I'm not going to read through them. They're here, and it's also on our website, on the guidelines and the application form. Um, so note that the selection process is going to happen in two stages, uh, and there will be interviews for those selected as finalists. Um, one bit of kind of demystifying the process is uh, I really strongly encourage you not to get caught up in grant speak or writing what you think we want to hear. Um, try to let your personal voice comes, come through. Um, it's very likely that the panelists reviewing the materials are not going to know you or your work, and it's really important for them to have a sense of your view of the theater field and your place in it as a change maker. Okay, we've gone through a lot of information here, just checking in big to see if we have any questions on Zoom so far. Not yet, but then I would encourage people on Zoom right now, if you have any questions or you have a list of questions, feel free to jot it down. And so we will open for opportunities to ask questions along the way. So um, feel free to, to have any questions lined up. Great. And if you're watching this uh, later, then certainly reach out again to us via email. I'm happy to talk you through whatever your questions are. Um, so Big, I think you're going to go through the timeline. Yes, thank you. So the timeline, application deadline, and also recommendation deadline as well, they're on the same date and is firm. It's Tuesday, March the 7th, this year, 2023, at by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, please note the time zone, it's Eastern Standard Time. So uh, it's important to note that participating in the RLC program is a professional commitment. So scheduled program activities are dates participants must be available, all happening in real time and not recorded for later viewing. And so uh, then we would have finalists interviews as well. Uh, and then the first program activity will be a two-part orientation on May 10th and 11th, 2023. Participants must be available to attend the National Critics Institute at the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center from July 5th to July 16th as well. There will be additional professional development activities afterwards from July to October, 2023. And then uh, there's gonna be a program break. And then in February to June, 2024, um, the program would resume and we will continue to have more professional development activities. I Great. see that we don't have. 
Oh, yes. Sorry, just going to jump in a second here. Uh, I just wanted to um, note that the two part orientation meeting is going to be online. So those are going to be Zoom meetings. Uh, the National Critics Institute at the O'Neill is in person. And then uh, all of the following professional development activities are going to be a mix of coming together as a cohort and uh, also online. So go ahead, Big, please. Thank you, Amelia. I think that's all for me for now. Uh, I was just about to check in to see if there are any questions, but it doesn't seem like there are questions. So uh, FYI for right now, your microphones are uh, turned off for now, but we will open it up later uh, once we open the floor for uh, questions, if you want to verbalize those questions as well. But for now, um, thank you, Danica, for the, for the screen sharing, for the help. Um, we are actually going to walk through the journey, how to apply and look at the application portal together. So um, I'm going to take it from, from here, Amelia. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Danica. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, Danica, as well, for your help. So now it's my turn to share the screen. So I'm going to share my screen. One moment, please. There you go. So here's the website for uh, RLC, right? So you might already be familiar. Um, so please re review program information and guidelines on our website here. So I'm gonna put in the chat, uh, again, the, um, the website link. So one moment. So there you go. Um, let me show you uh, the website in general and the application portal. So here, um, you would see the four tabs here, right? They contain different types of information. Uh, under here, you would see all the program description, including uh, who the program is for, the eligibility that we just went through, um, and the activities, the benefits that you would get as uh, an ROC participant, also the selection process and the criteria that Amelia just mentioned. There's also timeline in the next tab. So here you would see all the dates here, including the uh, deadline. Now the application. Let me pause here. I see there's a question. I'll get back to that question in one moment. Thank you. So application. So uh, you would see all the application materials here. Um, so uh, basically, in, in addition to all the questions and the narratives that you would have to uh, respond to in the application, you would have to also submit a bio or a resume of no more than two pages as well. Note that uh, it doesn't have to be in a, a, specific, a specific format. It doesn't have to be a resume like that, it can be a bio, uh, basically just to get to know your background and work experience better. Also, you are asked to submit to work samples. Again, it doesn't have to be published work. It doesn't even have to be a written form. It can be video, it can be audio, basically the work that demonstrate your approach, style, and strengths as writers. Also, you are asked to submit one recommendation. Um, and you are responsible for sending your recommender uh, the instructions here, right here in this section to your recommender, as well as the link to uh, the recommendation portal. So basically you can just copy and paste this section and give it to your uh, recommender, or basically you can just uh, give them the link and uh, direct them to this portion so they can see the whole information. And now let's talk about the uh, application portal. So here you would see the portal on the left here for applicants and the portal for the recommenders on the right here. So let me go uh, to the application portal. We basically decided to um, simplify the process by using Google Forms so that it's more user-friendly for everybody. Uh, you would see here that I already pre-filled um, everything here so we don't take too much time in this uh, info session, but basically just want you to be familiarized with um, how it looks. So when you come in, you're going to be asked to uh, 
put in your email. This is the email that uh, we would send all correspondence to you um, regarding this application. So please make sure that you put in the uh, desired email because you might have more than one email. So it's this email that we're gonna com communicate to you. Uh, and then you can click next. Then it's gonna lead you to the eligibility quiz, right? So uh, remember there are four uh, eligibility criteria. Um, so I'm just gonna click through, say that I'm eligible for now. So yes, I am based in the US and I also self-identify as BIPOC. I am more than 21 years old and I am able to receive taxable income in the US. So there you go. And then it will land on this instruction, basically the same instruction in the website, just as a reminder one more time. So please feel free to uh, peruse through it. And then once you're ready, you can click next here. Then basic information about yourself. So I'm gonna type in my name, last name, pronouns if any, uh, title, discipline, whatever it is for you, um, your address. So these are pre-filled. Uh, phone number, website is not required, but if you have one, we encourage you to put website in here so we can see and understand you more uh, and your work. And then next, demographic information. Just wanna emphasize this. Uh, we collect this information uh, as part of our strate strategic direction, um, we collect this uh, only to understand the makeup of the application pool. Um, your answers do not factor into decision making for this program, and it will be confidential, of course. So uh, we ask for some demographic information, including ethnicity. Uh, so you have the options, and also you have options to uh, self describe. If you should do, do so, you can do this in this optional box down here. Also gender identity, feel free to choose one and you can also uh, self-describe down, down there as well. So once you complete all these uh, questions, you can feel free to hit next. Then you will come into the narrative questions portion. So once you're ready, you can go in. There are basically four questions in here. Um, note that in the application process, you can actually choose to submit in whatever format that works for you, that works for your storytelling style, actually. So you can either do the traditional text uh, submission, so you would have a word limit of 250 words, or if you feel like you tell story better through audio or audio or video, you can also submit an audio or video recording of no more than one 30 minutes, one minutes and 30 seconds uh, as well. So let's say, let's say we're gonna do an audio video recording for uh, question number one. Let's see how it looks like. So basically it's gonna ask you to upload the file, of course, uh, the maximum is 100 megabytes and only one file. So um, for now, Let's see, you are going to be asked to up upload your file, right? So right now uh, you're not seeing my screen, but basically I'm choosing the file and then uploading Then it's here. So it's already uploaded here, right? So you're all good. Say this is your uh, recording of your response to this question, for example, it's just a test for me. Uh, so you can hit next as well. Once you're done, then it will lead you question. It will lead you to question number two. Maybe this one you want to submit as a text. You can do that. You don't have to stick to one format. So uh, say this one I'm going to submit as text submission. So uh, the word limit for this one is longer. It's 300, so it's different in each question. So I'm going to hit next. And I also, I already have some um, sample answer in here, just as a placeholder. Say you are done with uh, your narrative, then you can hit next here. Oh, and just a reminder though, if you submit a text submission, 
it is highly encouraged that you compose the text submission outside of the application portal. So that way, you know, you, you never know what happens, right? Internet can cut off or whatever, especially when you are submitting something, things will go wrong, right? <laughs> From my experience. So uh, feel free to compose it elsewhere where you can save. And then uh, when you come to the application portal, you can just copy and paste your uh, narrative questions. So for right now, I'm just gonna click next. And the same for question number three, I'm gonna choose text. I'm gonna go next. And question number four is basically anything else you would like the selection panel to know, uh, you can choose the two format, or if you don't have anything else to say, then you can choose this option as well. So in this case, uh, I'm just gonna go with, I don't have anything else. So next. Then here comes the part where you have to upload your work samples. So um, you can upload uh, either written word or a video or audio in here. So I already have uh, test files up here because we already know how it works. Um, so for now, I have attached this and I don't have any note. So I'm gonna click next. Also, the bio or resume. So you would have a limit of uh, 10 megabyte for the file and only one file. Um, the same uh, applies. So you would upload your file here. And once you're ready, click next. Here comes the, recommender, uh, the recommendation part. So basically here you are, uh, you would, you would be informed that you are responsible for sending the recommender the instructions and the link to the portal. It is your responsibility. And so you would have to acknowledge that you understand that and, and that uh, your, recommend, your recommender would submit your recommendation within the deadline as well. And at the end, so this is the end of the uh, application. Uh, you can type your full name in here uh, so that um, we can submit the application. And once you are ready, click submit here. But please feel free to uh, go through and revise everything to make sure everything is final before you submit. So that's the application portal. Um, I am going to stop share. There you go. And uh, take questions. Or before that, actually, Amelia, do you have anything to add? Um, no, it's all good. Actually, uh, one slight thing, if you are submitting video, um, it's always good to just give us the timestamp of when you want us to start watching and when you want us to end. Uh, otherwise, hopefully it's pretty straightforward. Um, I did see that uh, we had a question in the chat. So do we want to go to that one first, Big? Sure. Uh, so and in the meantime, I uh, right now your microphone is already on. So uh, if after this, you would like to verbalize your question into the room, you are welcome to do so as well. So for now, question number one, do you have more concrete dates for the additional professional activities? If someone has a contracted commitment during those dates, should they refrain from applying? Uh, Amelia, would you like to take this question? Sure. Um, I will say that we're generally able to work around and work with people's schedules. Um, in terms of the program activities, I mentioned the in-person things that would happen, the um, uh, O'Neill Conference uh, Critics Institute kind of boot camp, um, and then obviously also the orientation meeting. Uh, we will be having one-on-one -on -one meetings. We'll be having meetings as a full cohort. Uh, there will be webinars based on what the participants uh, want to uh, learn about. So it may be that um, folks are interested in talking with grant makers, funders, because that's not something you would have access to. So we would set up uh, a webinar and a call with some funders. So all of that, uh, we do try to uh, keep it as flexible as possible. So if you have something, um, we understand also that people have to um, make a living. Uh, that the RLC program, it's different from a full-time job or a position in that way. It's professional development. Um, hopefully that gave you a little bit more information and didn't confuse you more, but, but either, um, you can voice if you want me to elaborate or if you've got 
Okay, great. Uh, I think the answer was it was um, the answer works. Thank you. Any more questions from folks uh, in the Zoom room right now? I actually do have another question. Is it possible yes. to use um, work samples of things you've like already done? I heard you say um, social media was an option and mm -hmm. I do um, lessons from a black theater professor on social media. And I think that might be a good option for a sample, um, but I wasn't sure if you wanted um, things that are new or if we could use something that we've already posted. It's your call totally, whatever you feel is going to represent you the best. So if you have something that you want to submit that's already been uh, out in the world, it doesn't have to be anything new. So yes. Thank you. And I would also maybe suggest that, you know, since you have the option of, of submitting a couple different work samples, something that shows, you know, a variety of your interests. And maybe if you're working in different genres or styles, something that would show that as well will be helpful. Anything mm -hmm. else? Got a thumbs up on that one. Thank you for that. And certainly for the folks that are on the call as well as those who are gonna be watching it later, um, do reach out because I know sometimes when you start digging into the actual application, then questions come up or things come to you. So uh, we're around uh, and really we wanna make the process as clear and uh, streamlined and demystified as possible for y'all. You could also on our website see um, a list of the recipients from earlier rounds of the program. Um, this is the first time that we are dedicating the full cohort to journalists and critics, although in earlier co uh, cohorts we've included um, journalist critic. We have one um, alum from Portland, uh, another who's based in St. Louis, Missouri, and then another who is based in Miami. Yeah. All right. And well, I think, to, oh, sorry, go ahead, Big. I think we did mention already, just want to emphasize. So in the, in the past, uh, if you go through past recipients, right? In the past, you would see that it's a cohort of city specific uh, participants, but this round is nationwide. Just want to emphasize that it's national cohort. All righty, we've probably like bombarded you with lots of information, <laughs> um, but reach out and we hope to be in contact with you at some point, you know, sooner than later. Um, Big, are you good? Any other information here? Ah, we're on the closing slide. I'm good, yes. And also want to acknowledge our supporters as well. And again, if you have any more questions down the road, uh, feel free to contact us. So the contact information is already on the screen right now and also in the chat on Zoom. Thanks a lot and thanks for spending some time with us. Take good care. <laughs>